Great Chair. Yes. Good morning. I'm Tanan, Vice President. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Christian. Don't come back again. In Chiang Mai. He was here today, but day before this today. He can't come back. Yes, that's right. Okay, please.
welcome all of you to a lecture in the second series of the previous dialogues for the culture of peace program. In the second series, in the rodents in chemistry, economics, physics, and medicine have been cordially invited to give lectures on various aspects of their fields of expertise. The first lecture of the second series was about many things and those who died by Professor Claude Gordon Tanuji. In 1997, Nobel Rodent in Physics. For the second lecture in the series, Tsinghua University is really honored to welcome Professor Clive W. Granger from the University of California, San Diego, who will lecture on the economics of peace. <coughs> now I would like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Nanduman Rajito, Vice President of the International Relations of Tsinghua University, to address us. Vice President, please. Mr. Clive W. Granger, Mr. Christian Grafchester from the Peace Foundation in Macau, colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, one of rare privileges bestowed upon me as Vice President of Chiang Mai University is the opportunity to preside over occasions such as this. Professor Granger, it is indeed an honor to welcome you to our university on this most auspicious occasion. Professor Granger was a title recipient of the 2003 Nobel Prize in Economics for the development of methods of analyzing economic time series common trend. And for more than four decades, Sir Granger has been universally regarded as one of the most emerging scholars in time series economics. It is said to be virtually impossible to do work in time series economics without losing his methods. So his lecture today will be a great source of inspiration. Professor Granger is here today under the auspices of the second greatest dialogue towards our culture, Peace, Nobel Laureate's Lecture Series, a program which will provide our staff and the students with the unique opportunity of coming face to face with some of the world's most distinguished scientists and nationally. We now authorities in the field of economics and national law. I would like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to the International Peace Foundation, Thai Airways National, without whose support today's lecture would not be possible. Also, to thank the team and his colleagues, the Faculty of Economics, for their time and energy. They have contributed to organizing and hosting this event. So, Professor <coughs> Granger, our most sincere thanks to you for honoring our university with your presence. And I believe that the memories you take with you of our university and our city will hasten your return in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vice President Tanai. Next, I would like to invite Mr. President Graf Chanda, who represents the International Peace Foundation, to address us. We hope that the foundation is great. Mr. Graf Chanda, please. Initiated or promoted 
by the United Nations General Assembly in the year 2000. Thailand has been chosen as the host country for the event series Bridges, Dialogues Towards the Culture of Peace, initiated by the International Peace Foundation, a non-political independent foundation under the common patronage of the 21 Nobel Peace Prize laureates based in Vienna. Thailand has been chosen for the following reasons. The Thai nation and its people with the self-confidence, open-mindedness and tolerance provide a creative pathway towards peace which could serve as an inspiring role model for the prevention, mediation and solution of conflicts. Under the wisdom and spiritual leadership of His Majesty the King, as the shining example for inner and outer peace, a democratic Thailand has the ability to promote peace and the potential to stabilize the region. It has a rich, diversified network of national and international organizations, including business, diplomatic corps, media and NGOs, which provide the ground for an enhanced intercultural dialogue. The series of 250 lectures and dialogues, seminars, workshops, and artistic performances, which started in November 2003, will be further continued in Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Chonburi, Kanchanaburi, Konkan, and Nakhon till April 2005. During a one year period, 28 Nobel laureates for physics, peace, chemistry, medicine, literature, and the economics as well as decision makers in international politics, economy, science, culture, and the media are joining hands with Thai leaders in all parts of society to promote the kingdom as a center of dialogue and international understanding. The multidisciplinary and pluralistic approach of the events program reflects that peace involves all parts of societies. It involves awareness and social responsibility politicians, the business community, scientists, artists, and the media. And since peace within ourselves, with our families, and our environment starts in our mind. Obviously, you've got a mind to make. 
Now, whether you can separate the benefits from trial is a little thought, so it's not a question. That's an answer for a different practice, but anyway. I'd like to see that tried. And certainly, we didn't do that in the Gulf War sector before. I mean, interesting. We to see that there's nothing. Two 
spread out. Um, but eventually, of course, uh, night time and night. Okay, that's true of many animal species. Um, and when there's more people than resources, you can come into the What we're in our situation of is that, apart from some obvious exceptions, the resources are pretty good. Um, you can think of those shortages of oil and water, but all those that are in the short term, I'm sure we can, we can solve eventually most of our present shortages by changing technology. I'm optimistic. And in my lifetime, I've seen the world get better, in my opinion, not more worse. Um, but there's always danger. That's what I have to keep fighting for. This argument and what the solutions are for. I hope it doesn't work. It happened on me. I'm Abby uh, from Tiananmen University. And you already have touched on the, the, the technology a bit. Uh, uh, I believe that uh, you know, with this high technology, uh, in order to continue uh, peace, Cost to keep the peace may be also uh, higher than uh, what happened in the past. That's what question and what do you think about that? And uh, uh, since your cost uh, causality is so uh, well known, may I ask you, you know, about this econometric uh, question? <laughs> I know that there are so many people in this room also learning econometrics. Um, in the causality, um, well, economists tend to um, tend to interpret uh, the relationship on uh, when you regress uh, y on x as the uh, x causes the change in y. But uh, non-economists will say that's only show the relationship, the, or in a simple word, it is only the correlation. So please. Well, if you look at causality, that's a really difficult deep problem. Um, actually, I've been invited to a, a, a conference of philosophers in Germany this year, and that shows you how important Thomas has become um, to talk about causality and economics and philosophers. Um, the philosophers have been talking about causality for over 2,000 years, and they still haven't solved what it is. Um, I'm not sure we're going to solve all this in a few years. My attitude towards causality is a very pragmatic one. That if we can find a definition of causality that people find useful and apply and, and then um, get better models and um, produce uh, things that they find useful or helpful, then I think that's going to be the method we will use. When the better method comes along, that we find more helpful than just replace the old one with a new one. And that's why I'm speaking. So I'm totally fragmented on the definition. I don't want to call out I think that um, there has to be time flow that the effect has to be before the cause has to be before the effect. And the, the cause has to have special information. And that better minimum requirements of the cause. And once we have that, we can the model is based on the mathematical principles. That is the method of the dynamic principle. And it, it, it has been very widely accepted in the sense it's been used. Everyone says that's not the real causality, that's the only range of causality. And that phrase is very famous, so that's great. Uh, but yeah, you know, causality is a very deep question. Not going to solve it. We can be very useful. Thank you for your very interesting lecture and quite beautiful just for this university. And, and we now we have done a lot of revisions for the war has happened in the past so long and now we uh, you know, funding for the peace 
and I'd like to know as what is the real means cause of uh, the force that's going to happen in our world. That's my question. I think I can catch the talk. And I'm curious to know what is the main cause of the war that happened in our world in the past and now in the present time today by the Iraq. Also, maybe it will get in the Jews, maybe, or the weekend in the national. But I'd like to know what. What is the main cause of it? What he was trying to say is that uh, if the war is happening, what is the main cause of the next war? Oh, thanks for that. What is the main cause? Main cause. So the next war war. Yes. <laughs> because the next war war, I, I mean, what is it's the main cause? The, the main cause, let's make what it what a human war. Go to all you understand or do you catch what you're saying? Well, it depends who's fighting the war and where they fight it. I mean, war, wars can be bigger and more small than anywhere. Um, it depends on who lost the war is and who it was. I mean, if you're war in Africa, which doesn't involve very high, very high tech weapons, for example. The reason for the war. I see. I think that the, as an economist, that's not the question that I that I'm going to answer, but um, my my um, belief is that most wars are caused by political reasons, not economic reasons. And the politicians don't state the objective in the war very quite clearly. Even if they knew it. Um, and um, some wars, at the time they start, are pretty obvious why they started. Some wars are, are never obvious why they were ever fought. You never work out why certain wars ever stop ever making sense. And some wars, I'm thinking of the fourth of the war, which you probably don't know much about, it was just pure um, belief that Britain was, was still you know, king of the waves and should, should not be viewed by a couple of other countries. It was just pure arrogance. It wasn't, wasn't economic reasoning justified for the economics, but it wasn't that often the reason. So, there's no simple answer to that question. I think there are many different reasons, and most of them are not rational. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your answer, and I would like to recommend that uh, the first world will never forget them. Yeah. If our mind uh, has compassion to you, or such a being, our world and also we want to uh, each other with our person. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, sir. My name is Sasimha Gyalpam. I am the first year student of the Faculty of Economics at Chiang University. Um, from what you have addressed at the end of your speech that in peace we So I have a question from that, that well, as you know, the war in Iraq, as the US government calls it the war for peace, but um, what is really going on as, as I've noticed it, it creates fear in, in our everyday life, not only the American people, but you know, globally and also the economic so I'm just wondering what is the point of that. Yeah. Um. Thank you very much. Um, well, I'm hoping people 
we were going to say that. And we are enjoying peace, and we want to continue it, what we need to continue it. Um, and currently, you might well hate somebody else or dislike somebody else for recent events. And I hope we will try and go beyond that and say, well, let's see what will happen in the month, next year or two years. How do we, if I, if I lose that current hatred of this life, what's best for the country, what's best for me, what's best for my family. And then we are going to be pretty organ with these policies, not, not all that process. Um, and um, I don't want to be specific because uh, you can say something that's done for somebody and they're going to do that. But I'd like people to, to always try to think of, of the objective when they're having an objective about something and be forward-looking artist quick reaction and then bump to something. And um, I'm very annoyed by the new um, And I have wondered many people who didn't like it in the first place and that way it's going on and on and on and on. So, and it just shows once you start the more it's not easy to finish it. These days. Yeah. Well, we 
can trade sections as an example where you try and do that. Um, and it's clear that with, with the present way the world is constructed, if you have proper trade, if you had complete trade sanctions, you could, you could win a war. But people are very inventive of getting around trade sanctions, and most of trade sanctions leave. Because they don't quite win the war. You can affect the other country, but not with it. Um, and every example I know of with trade sanctions in the world has always not quite succeeded. If you had a, a, the world the really wanted to impose trade sanctions, I think they could pretty well shut down any time of the And they didn't want to, it was so remote that <laughs> they couldn't affect them. But most of the ones now would quickly want to give away to the teachers. That's a big sanction. That was an example of the good Would they sanction and work on the service? No, unless you know where, where, they, where they are. Terrorism is a whole different. It's not really a war, it's how you find wars. It's a different problem than terror. A huge problem. You have to get to the source of the problem. Yeah. 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 Thank you for all the questions. Now I would like to uh, associate the topic going to the conference in which I'm this is a credit to the Senate for an outstanding lecture. Thank you very much, Dr. 
officers. Next, I would like to invite Vice President for International Relations of Shanghai University to give a token of our appreciation to Person Wage, Vice President of the Thank you. 